So Tuesdays has been a place of molding, a place of building, a place where lives are lifted, a place where lives are molded. And my desire tonight is that we're going to move on in the same and that the Lord will help you and help your spirit, even as he helps me, so that we are better positioned to live what I call victorious lives. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Are we ready for tonight? Uh, are we set? Blessed be the name of Jesus. Are we set? Oh, we, 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 we talked last week and we discussed about success by the Holy Spirit. And today I want to move in the same dimension but discuss something a bit different. Though tied to the same, and I'm calling it a discerning heart. A discerning heart. You can also call it a seeing eye. A discerning heart. We're we'll talking discuss with us a discerning heart. One of the kings and the characters in the Bible that my spirit envies a lot. That I would wish to see other than our Lord Jesus Christ is King David. Every time I study his humility, I study his exploits. He marvels me. Blessed be the name of Jesus. He marvels me. He is the only king who never lost. I've told you several any of his battles. He never lost any. Never lost any. And uh, it's not just by chance that our Lord is called Son of David. It's not by chance. And uh, as we discuss what we are discussing today, I wanted to show you the combination that was around him that made him actually who he was. The people that were around him then from that group, we're going to pick a certain class, but from that group. So let's just first of all see the group. First Chronicles chapter 12, uh, we can take from verse 1. It's a long reading. Our interest, our interest will be on, on that something. But let's see whether we can take, how, how much we can take from this. Now let's read together now. Let me hear you read. Let's, let's, let's go now and let's go speed, right? Now this, this were the men who came to David at Sikla while he was still a fugitive from Saul, the son of Cush. You remember the story. He's run away from Saul. He has gone to live with King Achish, and King Achish has accompanied him as what we call a defector. And if they are going and he is assisting a foreign king to win battles. He has men he has trained, so they have accommodated him. But on this particular day, they are going to fight against King Saul. And Akish and the other Philistines who didn't take it. So they said this guy must go back. But they had given him a small town. Its name was Sikra. That's the place that when he was in exile, when they are, where they had given him to stay. Now the Bible is giving us a side of that story. When you read from the book of Samuel, you see when the women have been captured. You see when the women are crying and the cities are burnt. But there is a dimension from that book that you do not really see that I want to show you now. Do you have a background now? Now let's read together now with that understanding. Let's read together now. These were the men that came to David at Sikla, while he was still at a fugitive from Saul, the son of Cush. And they were among the mighty men. I want you to know that. They were among the mighty men. Help us of war. Let's go on. Armed with bow. Look at that. Armed with bow. Using both right hand and left hand. You know, I don't want you just to see things and just take things uh, casually. One of the things when you see the, the Bible giving you, they are able to use left and right hand. It has to do with balance. They were balanced people. Don't, don't just see the, the inclination in terms of the physical heart. It's just trying to show you a, a threshold. A threshold. Somebody who is mentally balanced. Somebody who is emotionally balanced. Somebody who is weighty, not swayable, not swayed about. These were men that were with him. These were the guys around him. The Bible calls the mighty men. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Let's continue reading. And you see, it says, they were able to shoot arrows, throw stones, handle bows. These were the high class in the days of David, forms of weaponry. 
In, in fact, was in our days now, we'll be talking about the, we'll be talking about the steel bomb bombers, B-52, this kind of arsenal. But in the days of David, this where technology in terms of weak parts had come. The Bible says they were able to handle both. Amen. Let's go on now. Let's go on. Let's move on. The chief was Ahiaza, the son of Josh. Let's go on. Let's move on. Verse 4. Let's move on. Verse 4. Let's move on. Verse 4. Ishmael, the Gibbite, a mighty man among the that, and over the that, Jeremiah, Jehaziel, Johanan, jo Josabah. Let's go on. Let's go to Lydia. Look at the names. Hmm? Jeremoth, Beria, Shamari. What are we doing? I'm trying to show you the characters around this key. The thing that made it. Look at the Bible, it's just amazing. It's, it says, who are designated by me to make David king? That was their agenda. They are coming to promote him, to make him. And the Bible says, they were designated. They, they have the abilities to make this happen. Let's go on. Of the sons of... Now, this is where we're going now. I want you to read slowly. I want you to read slowly now. Mm -hmm. Of the sons of Issachar, who had an understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do, to know what Israel, not to know what Issachar should do, not to know what tribe should do, not to know what the king should do, to know what the nation should do. The Bible says, read with me now, read with me now. The Bible says, of the sons of Issachar, who had understanding of the time to know what Israel had to do, their chiefs were 200. Give us amplified version, something I want us to really have a look at this. Same book, same verse. You're able to give us verse 32. Verse 32. Let's go back to verse 32, sir. Verse 32, yes. Now read with me now. Let me hear you read. Mm -hmm. And of, of Isaac, a man who had understanding of times to know what Israel ought to do. 200 men. The Bible is saying, look at the other groupings. We had 28,000. 20,500. But when we come to this character from the tribe of Isaac, we have 200 men. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Of the, the men born out of the lineage of Isaac. So, we are trying to ask ourselves, how did they become such a grouping that they have an understanding of time? They are men of war, but they don't fight with the men. They stand at the time. And from time, they are able to make calibrations that are correct. So, they know at this time, at this particular time, this is what ought to be done. Matching action with time giving them effortless success. A layer gift, not common. Born from the tribe, remember Israel had 12 tribes. But from the 12, only one tribe, the tribe of Isaac, had men that had understanding of time. That had understanding of what should be done. The pain number one, now you can take, you can take. Notes. You can take notes. The number one pain in many people's life is the inability to design the times. We are, discuss we are discussing a designing heart. And we have asked ourselves, why was King David such a man? 
and we have looked around the combination of people that were around him and we have singled out a particular group from the tribe of Isaac and we are seeing one of their characteristics about these men. The Bible records, the Holy Ghost takes record is that these guys had an understanding of time. They knew what to do. They had an understanding, number one, of time. They had an understanding of time, number one. Number two, they knew what to do. And we have said, num the problem number one in many Christians' lives is inability to discern the times. Then the common question is, what should I do? There is a lot of guesswork in the body of Christ. There is a lot of shadow boxing. Shadow boxing. You, you, you must be brought to a place by God where you are no longer a slave of time. I wish that you are taking this note seriously. Calendar, as we know it, should never be able to stop you. Never been able to, to stop you. There is a dimension of wisdom that needs to permeate your understanding. If you are going to conquer and win, at the time of new beginnings, that's the word God gives us. The new beginnings, if you look, if you look at the theme God gave us, it has to do with time slots. It has to do with time that we have beginnings. How do you know it's beginning? Clock is ticking. It's seasons. The scripture is saying we have a group from the scriptures that have an understanding to tell what is it now. To tell what is coming. To tell how do you align with what is coming. How do you align for your success. How do you align now that this has come. There's a scripture which we read uh, so that we have a better, I mean, I mean we are better acquainted, acquainted with this. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses. Let's take it from verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses 10. Let's read from Amplified Version. Mm -hmm. Let me hear you read. Hmm? Let me hear you read. Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. For there is no work on the vice of knowledge. Or wisdom in shell, the place of the dead, where you are going. Now, many people misinterpret this scripture. Many people think that this scripture is encouraging you to do what you are doing with all your might. This scripture is telling you the pain of many who don't know what to do. So, whatever they do, they do with all their might. You have not heard what I've said. Let me explain again slowly. <laughs> Sons of Isaac had an understanding of time. So they knew what to do. If they knew what to do, they also knew what not to do. Ah, you. It has to do with choice. You get. But this one is saying, when you are choiceless, whatever happens, you do. And as a result of what you are doing, it tells you the end result. You are going, to, where you are going, there is no knowledge. No, you are not getting what I'm saying. If that is how you are working, if whatever you find, you just do it with all your heart. Where you are going? That path is path without knowledge. You will be grouped among with your grandmothers and your forefathers in the place of the dead. That's what it's saying. Now he says, but I looked at and asked myself, why should this be so? Let's go to the next one. He got the answer. I returned. Now he returns. Mm -hmm. Now read with me now. And I saw under the sun that the race, look at this, is not the swift, nor the battle to the strong, Neither is bread. The less speed. Speed is not about how swift, how young, how energetic you are. The battle has nothing to do with your capacity. I want you to see that. When you're talking about the strong, you're talking about the capacity. The battle has nothing to do with capacity. Let's go on. Neither bread with understanding, knowledge on acquisition of bread. See? It says, it says, for man also knows not his time of death. Let's go back. Let's go back again. Let's go back again. 11. Let's go back again. 11. Yes. There's something we have skipped there. Yes. 
I turned and I saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. Neither is blind to the wise, nor riches to the men of intelligence and understanding, nor favor to men of skill. Semicolon. Read that, the next one, strongly. Read with me now. But time and chance happeneth to them all. In other words, in other words, oh, let's, let's begin, begin from the, 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 the very first sentence. He's saying that the race is not to the swift. Now, let's just stay with the race. The race will have number one and the last one. He is saying when we are trying to see then the marketer between number one and number two. He found out it has nothing to do with swiftness. He says, when he analyzed, the reason we have number one and rust is because time and chance separated them. And it is saying, time and chance came to all because it is happening to everyone. So no one can claim I am disadvantaged. No one under the sun is disadvantaged, divinely disadvantaged, not a single one. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You could be a parental mistake. You are never to be born, but you are not a divine mistake. You are ordained to be. You understand? But you will suffer the same consequence. You will suffer verse 10 if verse 11 is not clear in your spirit. Are you coming home now? Blessed be the name of Jesus. It says, chance, chance and time happen to all. But sons of Isaac knew what to do at what time. Not just them, but the nation. In other words, they sat in the place of advisors. And as a result, Israel never lost war when these guys are around. They are not going to fight. They are not throwing stones. They will sit down around the king and give the king instructions. Are we coming somewhere? Blessed be the name of Jesus. When, 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 when you are untrained on time handling and seasons handling, when you are untrained, your behavior is very erratic. Your behavior is very erratic. You become very emotional because your decisions are governed by logic. Your decisions are not governed by discernment. You have no way to tell what is coming. So you argue and you reason with your logical reasonings, depending on what is happening. Because in Wakatu, COVID, people are doing this. Because it's January, this is what happens. You are not guided by, by discernment. You are guided by the rising and the fall of the sun. Now, you're going to you. Bible says something, Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 16. Let's go there. Amplified version. Let's begin from verse 15. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 15. Let's take it from verse 15. Now, 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 this is the Bible note to me. Let me hear it. Watch this, Kia Vizuri. The labor of fools. So, fools labor. Fools labor. Come on, talk to me. Fools labor. One way to tell someone is a fool is not one who is not working. You can be a busy fool. You can be. Do you understand? And the Bible is saying, what, when a fool finds labor, whatever he finds, he does it with all his strength. That's what the Bible is saying. He has no way to choose where to invest his energy. Right down. <laughs> Now, let's go now, let's go now. The labor of fools, whereas every one of them, because he is ignorant, I want you to read that now, he is ignorant, he is so ignorant of the ordinary matters that he does not even know how to get to town. Now, let's go to the next one now, this is where we are going. Woe oh, oh, to you, O oh, lad, mm. when uh, you are king is a child. Or a servant. And when your officials feast in the morning. Now let me explain to you what is happening. He is saying you are in great trouble. You are in great danger. When the decision maker in your life. I don't want you to just think about the land. I want you to replace the land with your personality. If the one governing and guiding your personality is a child. In other words, if your decisions are babyish. You find yourself feasting in the morning. 
There is time for feasting. Can we continue reading? Let's continue reading. Let's see the next one. Turundi hini makidoko kitabu tufike pare. Ujaona, ujaona u upuzi. Ujaona u upuzi. Unangangana, umetapana na kasi December yote na, jan, na mesi yo ingine yote kwa sababu unamtoto anaenda shure January. Ukiripa school fees na ununue uniform na ulipe kila kitu ambayo kinahusu mtoto yeye nyimbaki nguo na nini nyingine wewe ukalia ngado have you seen that and moraki data amen all of us and then you are current trampos somehow evaporates and you become of a generous you can call anybody you eat the fat after a week you are back to square one Woe to you when your king is a kid and you like feasting in the morning when do you feast in the morning you are not you are not you don't want to give time you kendo kiona ku vipe njeria wa pendo kendo kiona ku eh you are not able to differentiate between profit and capital ukiuza kitu maana kimenunuliwa ngiritano unatumia ngiritano lakini haujui ndani ya ngiritano kuna ngiri mtatu ulikuwa umenunua nayo ambayo inastahili kuachiliwa niendelee yeah. Let's go on to the next one. Let's go to the next one now. We have a we have a crying. We are we have a we have a woing. We have a woing group. We have a happy group. Right? Let's read now. Let's read the happy group. Hmm? Why why are you reading that happy as like like you are suspicious of them? Let's read. Happy, fortunate, and to be envied. I want you to see that. To be envied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, listen just before you progress. Your happiness is not happiness until it can manifest. Because when your happiness is just known to you, sometimes it can be delusion. Yes. You can walk in deception. And you think you have arrived. Have you not seen people who cannot be cancelled? They are full of themselves. They understand everything. I went somewhere and I met a man we sat down with him. We were discussing one of his brothers. A former banker. Messed up. This guy is driving bands. Sat me down. We have a discussion. I am able to detect this a high guy. And we are talking about him. And he's trying to advise me about adventures in business world. And then he tells me, I'm trying to help my brother. His brother is far away. He's coming. It's the elder brother. And he says, the problem with him is that he always has option B. But he has never had option A. And guess what? He comes. He has not even he has not even waited to know our discussion where we are. He is on it. He is now advising us on investment. He is advising us on how should people should invest. This advisor has no home. This advisor has no place. This advisor has nothing he's doing. This advisor, the only thing he has is what he's wearing. But he can't let big guys talk. And the brother told me, mm -hmm. We are discussing you now. Let's go on. Let's go on. Please, go back, go back. Nataka Musome, right? Let's go back, let's go back. Happy, fortunate, and to be envied, are you all right? When your king is a free man, and of noble birth and character, and when your officials feast at the proper, look at that. It doesn't say feast in the evening. The opposite of morning is not evening. The opposite of morning in life is proper. Are you getting what I'm trying to tell you? So it's happy is you when they can be able to tell when. It has to do with choice. It has to do with ability to discern. Getting a seeing eye to see beyond. And my mama would always tell me, see beyond your nose. I have you where I need you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you are beige and your spirit is darkened, you have problem allocating time. You have a problem allocating time. You do not know what to pursue. You have so many agendas, but you do not have priority. You really can't tell how your day is supposed to be spent. So you go by what comes. You go by what comes. And sometimes what makes you really work or turn is the pressure you have. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Sometimes you may think as a child of God you are very busy. But the issue is not that you are not busy. The issue is that you are disorganized. If you are to get organized, you realize how idle you are. 
Hallelujah. But because you are not organized, then you really have little time to rest. Because you are suffering the consequence of your disorganization. What, what, when you talk about one of the characters of a child, one of the characters of a kid is inability to sequence things. And that's why in school there must be bell. There must be a tutor. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I hear you. You know, you know, the best teacher ni experience is there. No, experience is not the best teacher. Experience is the last teacher. Like that. When nobody else can train you, experience. <laughs> like this down. Like this down. When you cannot design time, when you cannot design time, when your eye cannot see, when you're talking about the eye, we'll be explaining to you that, that, that scene has to do with what? But for now, just like that. When you cannot design, you always trivialize. You always trivialize what you are supposed to highly esteem. When you, when you cannot design, you are not able to allocate value. One of the indicators that you have come of age is that you are able to trace and place value. You are able to trace and place value. When you are not able to design, you are not able to match value. So you are, you are going to ignore and rubbish, rubbish. Oh, rubies. Euro. Rubbish, rubies. Utaweza kuweka dhamana kwenye kitu cha dhamana. Utakuwa unakiona na unakosa dhamana yake. Amen. Unanielewa vizuri? Nimetoka leo saa hii tu hata saa saa sa moja injaisha nimepitia kwangu. And as an organized father. Hallelujah. Yes. You know everybody God said you are going to die. The number one thing you say is set your house in order. Are you? It's, in, it's an abuse of fatherhood if you die without your house being in order. And unfortunately many of them put it the house in order when they are departing. But now, because that's not a discussion, let's just give you an example. Now, I'm, me I'm meeting this little one in my house. And for some reason, they are with a mother in town. He is, she has this craving for sausage. So I've, I've bought him African sausage. I've also bought some meat. African sausage is a small piece. So I'm giving him the entire package. But his interest is on the small one. The craving for the small one is making it look so, such a work. To take the entire package to the kitchen. You see, she, he, he, he has trouble picking the entire package to the kitchen because the craving for this, to eat it along the way, like it will be supper. He, he is genuinely doing it. He is, not, he, he is not hurting himself willingly. What is failing him? Inability to design because of his age. You listening to what I'm saying? You, you are looking at my child and you are little beating him, but it's a reflection, unfortunately, to many of us. You think that which you need is really what is important. When you are not able to match value, you always be pursuing ghosts. Imaginary things that are not there. Amen. Are you listening? When I was a young one, I really value mom. I love mom. Mama had this gift of teaching, only that he had not been in biblical school. So he couldn't write notes. When I really look at him, at how she taught me, and the things she trained me then, one of the things she didn't, she made sure that our home had some money to spend at all costs. So as a result, there were things that were not bought enough. One of them is bread. And I had always issues with her. Why should you buy one bread? When we are four of us. It never really clicked in my head. Why should a family of four be bought one? And I would always argue with her. That one day when I become big. I will be buying mandazi. And I will be packing them. Hallelujah. <laughs> I was sincere. 
You can be sincerely wrong, right? Can be sincerely wrong. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can roar, you can cry, you can cry, you can shout the entire night. You can have such night seeking God. But if your purpose is being guided by a bright eye, you are in big trouble. Hallelujah. Muna ni poetry wa pendo. What are, what, are, what, what are the advantage when you have a discerning eye? What are the advantage when you have a discerning eye? Number one, you are able you are able to seize opportunities and also avoid traps. You are able to seize opportunities and also avoid traps. As a result, you are always able to avoid pain. You are always able to avoid pain. There are some injuries some of us are nursing that heaven is surprised that you are hurt. It is never expected you on those corridors. But because your heart is bright, you walk those corridors by faith. <laughs> Amen. Along the way, you met sons of Issachar and told you to turn back. But you know you are a man of valor. Your way is one. <laughs> Talk to me. Bwana <laughs> Shiwe. Praise the name of Jesus. When, when, when you are I, when you have understanding heart, you are able to place value. And as a result of that ability, you always enjoy favor. You always enjoy favor. There are people you come close to or rub shoulders with. And because you are able to design, you do not just treat them like casuals. You are not very casual on some relationships. Because your eye is able to design who this person is. You are able to know what to place in this person. Because you are able to tell what is coming next. Many of us praying for favor really don't need favor. They need restoration. Please write that down. Many of you praying in the mountain, God open door. I pray for a breakthrough. You need restoration of time that the canker will come. Amen. Can I just give an example? Yes, there was this guy who loved you, and this guy who also loved you. But because this guy, according to your peer, peer, peer placings, and the way, and the homes, and all that. This one looked like, mm -hmm. the only good thing about him was his just pureness of heart. So you walked this path. Now you are here, rich, but paining. Now you are here. Famous, but without a place. And you are always wishing that that heart would have been brought here. Meanwhile, that guy, the path he went, God was with him. Guess what? Anytime you meet, he really encourages you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Actually, worst, worst if he is your pastor now. Because you really don't love those private ministrations. You, you don't want to go that path, do we? Matthew chapter 6, verse 27, verse 22. Let's go there. Let's go there. Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. Let me hear you read. Let me hear, let me read. Please let me hear you read. Let me hear you read. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is sound, let me hear you read again. If your eye is sound, yes, mm -hmm. then your entire body will be full of light. Mm -hmm. But, let me hear you read. But, in other words, I want you to replace now because we are learning. Let's, let's just go back. Let's just go back, verse 22. Now, say, this, say, read with this. I want you to replace the eye with the discernment. Now, read. The discernment is the lamp of the spirit. Let's continue reading now. So, if your discernment is corrupted, 
if your discernment is all right, if your discernment is sound, then your environment, your body is full of. If your discernment, now on the contrary, is not sound. What is discernment? Now, because now we are getting into these things deep now. The ability to pick spiritual impasses. The ability to pick spiritual impasses. You are looking and it's like you're not seeing, but you are seeing beyond the natural. It's an understanding God gives. It's an understanding God gives. And therefore you realize, look up, your judgments are not based on your experiences. Your next stop, step is not being guided by your past experience, but rather by the spiritual knowledge that your trained spiritual man is able to capture. That's why when he is, has been able to pick success in a business that is not doing well currently, you are not giving up. So people can't really tell why should you go ahead on such a work? When discernment has been compromised, you're going to buy a business that is doing very well, but it's on a grave bed. Are you listening? Blessed be the name of Jesus. That helps you to know what to avoid. What to avoid. Sometimes the explanation might not be very clear. It could be in matters of relationship for some reason. You don't know why you don't want to be in relationship with this woman. She's a good businesswoman, a good person in church. You fellowship, you see her do her things, and there is nothing physically wrong you can pick. But for some reason, your spirit picks something. So she comes with offers, and you are in their need, but you are able to smell something between the two. Amen. And you avoid somebody else just jumps in. Five months down the lane, the story. Blessed be the name of Jesus. The Bible says, wise man sees trouble when he ducks. Let's lead. Let's lead. If then the very right. Mm -hmm. Now, after the conclusion, kama yoko jiambia, kwako ni giza, basi yako ni tororo. Yako imepita nini? Yako imepita giza? Yako si giza sasa? Sasa ni giza? <laughs> Unajua nikupotea, nikupotea kwa aina gani huko? Unajua kupotea kuzuri? Kuna kupotea kuzuri? Kupotea si kuzuri. Lakini kuna kupotea kuzuri. Kupotea na unajua umepotea. Lakini kama umepotea na haujui umepotea, actually unajaribu kuwaonyesha njia wenye wako katika njia nzuri ya kwamba wamepotea wewe kwa kweli umepotea kabisa you understand the knowledge of the bible thank you now read this when 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 your discernment is working your gates are never closed your gates are never closed because you quick you are quickly able to locate doors you are quickly able to locate gates you are quickly able to do that when your discernment is working then you are able to redeem you are able to redeem time. Time. In other words, you are able to redeem destiny because time is a measure of destiny. Time is a measure of destiny. That's why you hear, you talk about lifetime. Lifetime. When you discuss about your entire life, people talk about lifetime. Bibles advises something in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verses 14. Let's read from 14 into 15. Let's read together. Let's read together. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 14. Therefore he says, I want you to read that now. Therefore he says, awake. Awake, O sleeper. Hmm? 
arise from the dead. And Christ shall shine. Make the dawn upon you and give you light. Arise. Arise. Discover. Discover. One day things are not going to change. You know, have you, have you found yourself in that delusion that one day things will change? Tell your neighbor, awake you sleeper. Yes. Amen. <laughs> you wake up, do nothing, and you are hoping, you are just wishing that one day things will change. Yes. It is that day just now you have understood he has not changed. You, you located this trouble during courtship, but you hoped one day. Amen. If you land here, you would have been saved that years of pain. And I say, amazingly, you want me to fix that years of your mercy in a day. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Actually, you don't want even to be given instruction into going to Jordan. You want just a wave, a wave offering. And you are going back to Israel again. Amen. Let's read together now. <laughs> Let's read together now. Let's read. Let's read together. Therefore, he says, Awake, you sleeper. Uh, you. You. You sleeper. Awake, you sleeper. Mm -hmm. And arise from the dead. And Christ anointing. The anointing. Christ anointing shall shine. Make dawn come upon you. And give you like It tells you things are not just going to happen to you. There is your bait. There is the decision. There is a turning that you need to make. Blessed be the name of Jesus. That I'm not going to walk again brightly. There is going to be a desire for knowledge. There's going to be a desire for impartation. I like it. One of the sons came to me the other day. He said, he called me, said, this year, Nimimi Nawewe. And watching from how they have been consistent around me, I can tell that he is determined. Then he has passed. He has fulfilled Ephesians chapter 5 verse 14. Awake, he is sleeper. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Please, don't buy dreams that you get from a sleep you're not supposed to be in the first place. You have missed what I've told you. You know, to the you to see how you're going 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 to see Itinge vinga. Mwede nyo mwenga kwa chua million. Ukira. Namuka. Nye jirani yako ita amuka. Amuka. Amen. Na chua tu siku moja tanunuwa nguya mtumba. Ikiwa na watakuwa mesau. Doras, come on, Doras. Million in coffee. <laughs> read, 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 read loudly. He says, Awake, O oh sleeper. <laughs> let, let's, let's go to verse 15. Let's advise you. What are you going to do? Look, look, what are you going to do? Let, let me read. What are you going to do? Look carefully. What was your problem? How you walked. That walking doesn't mean moving from location. It is not a geographical walk. No, it has to do with discernment, wisdom. Your application of decisions and choices. That is not walking from Kerewea to Kutus. You know, people apply scriptures funnily. Hallelujah. Don't operate that room. Anyway, let's just go. Live purposively. Good. Live. Let me, let me hear it. Live purposively and worldly. And read it again. Live number one. Purposively. What is the agenda? What is the agenda? Worthily. Is there value? Is there value? Accurately. Is it correct? 
Is it correct? Don't walk as the unwise. Don't walk like them. No. Let these three de 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 determine the decision. Purpose, value, right. Amen. If the, if, the, if, if the three elements are missing, don't get involved. Don't get involved. However attractive it may be, don't get involved. This is power and devising the church. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Says, don't hmm? be sensible. Walk like intelligent people. Why? Why? Is, why? Move on. Verse 16. Why? Making the very most of the time. Why? Buying each opportunity. Buying each opportunity. And please note, buying each opportunity, not each trap, not each opening opportunity. The discernment you're able to tell this is a trap. This is an opportunity. What is a trap? That, that looks like a, an opportunity, but has, has been set by an anniversary. Are you listening? Are you, are you getting blessed? Yes, it looks like it. Looks like it. Actually, you're not even praying about it. You're thanking God about it. You are singing your way to the grave. Let's read. Making the very most of the time. Buying every opportunity. Why? Because the days are evil. Look at Colossians chapter 4, verse 5. Let's begin from verse 6. Verse, verse 4. Let's begin from verse 4. Colossians chapter 4, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Read with me now. He's telling them, pray for me. He's advising them to pray for him. And he's giving one of the prayer items. What is the prayer item? Let's lead together. That I may proclaim it fully, the gospel, and make it clear. Speak boldly and unfold that mystery as is my duty, like I'm doing now. Then he says, he goes on to advise them. Read with me now. Behave yourself wisely. In other words, live prudently and with discretion. I want you to read that one again, brothers and sisters. Live Prudently and yes, with discretion. In other words, you are doing an algebra. You are solving the equation. Many of you have many, many, many variables. Many variables. Many variables. Unaweza rara anywhere. Hata leo, kwako huko ni sawa, but guarantee utarara huko ni kifika huko. Unaweza potelea huko tu. It just requires a simple talking out there and you have changed your destination. You are that fluid. Kuna takana tu kule kuonekana kitu wampako kwa kwa wakuna. What is your problem? Discretion. <laughs> Discretion. Una shida ya break. Wewe ni mutu wa imani. So that you have time to soak it. Hallelujah. I, I wouldn't be where I am. And I tell you, I look at my life and there are many gaps. I see backwards. I wish Father, this thing visited me ahead. I'm trying to help you as God is helping me. This is where things are. Many of you are crying for, I mean, anointing. But anointing has levels. Don't, don't desire your hair to be anointed when your eyes are not anointed. Because your hair will fail you. You have missed what I've just told you. If Samson's eyes were anointed, his story would be different as we told it in the Bible. But the problem was, what was anointed? Tell your neighbor, you need, you need your anointing ahead of you. Not behind you. <laughs> let's eat this together. Let's eat, let's eat this together and call it a night. Mm -hmm. Let me hear it. Behave yourself wisely. Living prudently. And with discretion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In your relationship with those of the outside world, in other words, the non 
Christians. It doesn't say that you don't relate with them. No. It says, making the very most of the time and doing what? Seizing what? Buying up. Buying up. Opportunities. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. No, 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 no. Let's, let's just go back there. Let's just go back there. Let me explain that as we wind up. Listen, please, look up. You know, you read your scriptures the way you want. Mungu anatakanga wale ambao amjawakoka, wakusanye, alafu wakisha kusanya, ana transfer. Unakumbuka hiyo tra- unakumbuka hiyo scripture. He read the the, the ungodly gather. Then in their he have their folly, he transfers to them. In the folly of the unwise, not in the folly of Christians. How is the transfer? How is the transaction? What is the check that makes the, trans- the transfer? Buy up of opportunities. Never forget. Write that down. Buy up of opportunities. Not waiting to see the spoils. Are you able to discern? Are you able to see this? Are you able to see it? Amen. It's a, it's a, it's a grace. God is in the life of a person. It's a grace. It's a grace God has put in the life of an individual, in the heart of a person. So that your decisions, the discretion, brother, sister, you, you, you execute things with marvelling, marvelling, mastery, mastery of the choices of life. Mastery. Blessed be the name of Jesus. And as a result, you have little wastes. You have no wastes in your life. Many of your wastes are in time slot. So you really cannot figure out that you have wasted. Because it's not in junk form. It's in time. So, in your old age, that's when you know how big your waste has been. I hope I'm talking to you somebody. Amen. There are opportunities you should never miss. Write that down. And it takes discernment. They are called lifetime opportunities. You should not miss. Says the race is not the swift. Says when they have been defeated, it's not because they have not been strong. When they have not bled, it is not that they have not been wise. Says opportunities and chances appear to them all. But the, the way they dealt with opportunities, the, the way they dealt with chances, was the de- decision maker. How did you do? What are, like now, there are people, we've gathered here out of us. There are those of us watching us over the platforms we have. There are those who make the best out of this. But there are those who are struggling to stay alive. As in stay awake. But because probably what we are learning today is an equation that's supposed to be done in your 10 years span. At on the, on your, on 10, 10 years from now, it will come. You can't remember today. Because there is no way to relate. So you will suffer as loss on that day. Why? Because today, opportunity was not accurately positioned in your life. And as a result, 10 years are coming. And you are just saying, you are less fortunate. This, it is not about being fortunate. Time appears to. Oh, but how are you executing what God is giving you? Job chapter 28 verse 7. We'll close our discussion from there. Job. Let's go there. Mm-hmm. Give us King James Version. I want you to read. Read with me now. There is a path oh, yeah. which no foe knoweth and which the vulture's eye has not seen. Let's go on. Let's go on. The lion's worms have not rooted it. No, the fierce lion passed by it. Let's go back verse 7 again. Let's pick it from Messenger Version. Messenger Version. Let's pick it from verse 7 again. Mm-hmm. Vultures are blind to leeches, to its leeches. Hawks never lay eyes on it. Okay, let's begin from verse 6. Let's see how it's trying to bring this out. I'm trying to look for a version that can, yes. Firing sapphires from stones and chiseling gold from the locks. Now, let's move into verse 7 now. Let's move into verse 7. Vultures are blind to its leeches. Hawks never lay eyes on it. Let's go on. Young lion, wild animals are oblivious to it. Lions don't know it's there. Let's go on. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm, I'm number 10 will just begin to help you now. Mm-hmm. They tunnel through the rocks and find all kinds of beautiful gems. Let's go on. Then discover their origins of rivers and bring earth's secrets to light. Let's go on. But where, oh, where will they find wisdom? That's what I wanted to show you. That there is a way wisdom delivers success that even the mighty cannot really explain. There is a way wisdom, discernment, discernment, wisdom, discernment delivers success to your life. There is a way discernment molds your future, molds your life that those who are considered strong in your neighborhood cannot really figure out how you came in. The lions, the mighty in your neighborhood can't even tell. They couldn't see you move up. They would have seized it. It was not obvious. They would have taken it up. It's called the wisdom of the just at work in your life. And that's how Papa God promotes his children. He gives them, like, I would call it another eye. Ability to see what they are not seeing. You understand? Hey, are you listening? Like in the, uh, like in the, in the house of Rabban, this guy is, looks less fortunate. And everybody is laughing at him. He's told now to pick your salary. He comes with a crazy idea. He says, I want the spotted. And everybody that night is laughing off. But a few chapters, who is crying? The entire house of Jacob. Amen. I went home the other day. I think a week, a week or two weeks ago went home. And I did something I've not done for many years. This time, instead of just bypassing the town, by God's grace, I think God just wanted to show me the difference. I said this time, I'm going to go, I'm going to drive through the town. My imagination was, I was in that town, driving that town like in my normal days, like 20 years ago. So anybody around, we have a disconnection. And I entered in, I discovered not that people don't notice you. The impact you have is the one determines whether they will get interest with you or not. I'm going to say that one again slowly. If you enter your plot where you stay and nobody really notices you are around, it is not that they are busy. There's something going to do with you. Please stand up. When you see nobody comes to seek for help from your house, it's not that people are satisfied. Uh, Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for such a time. And I pray that the Lord you help us and help the body of Christ and help us in this region to grow and to have a discerning heart so that we are not disadvantaged in our choices and in our decisions. We worship you, our Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Give the Lord a clap of praise. Give the Lord a clap of praise.